What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video on the Sands Holiday Hack Challenge 2018. I am uh, logged into CrinkleCon here, and uh, we're going to be talking to Holly Evergreen, this nice elf that can give us some hints for objective number five, which is what we're going to be going through in this video. So she will give some hints after we complete the terminal challenge here, and we can go ahead and talk to her, see her dialogue. It looks like that she has some HTTP2 version uh, of a server or web server running, and we need to be able to curl to it. Uh, and she gives us some hints. If we actually check out our badge here, we can take a look at the HTTP 2.0 basics, and we can open that up in a new tab. I'll switch to it here. And it's kind of a lengthy article that's talking about HTTP 2 and how it really works. It's kind of cool, though. It actually uses... Uh, a little bit more binary uh, in the way that the headers and the communication is actually done. It's no longer an ASCII text, and it's actually going to be specific to a connection, right? So uh, multiple pieces of data or multiple like files between the JavaScript or the CSS and the HTML can all come in one request rather than multiple. So it's very, very cool. Uh, and you can watch the video, the talk that's represented by uh, Chris Elgy and Chris Davis. Again, just checking out that link here in the talks for KringleCon. So, all right, let's jump into it. We have the terminal challenge here. I will go ahead and connect. Looks like we are looking at a web server running on localhost port 8080. We can check out the contents of the configuration file in the etc. nginx folder here. So nginx.conf. We cat it out and some interesting stuff here. Kind of basic on HTTP. It's setting files has some comment stuff out here. Love using the new stuff as a comment from Bushy here. It looks like it's listening on port 8080 and using HTTP2. So that's peculiar. We can go ahead and uh, try and curl it, right? Curl HTTP, localhost, port 8080. And we get some weird characters. So that's not what we would have expected there, right? So if this is running on HTTP2, we need to be able to speak that HTTP2 language or kind of talk that talk, right? Again, if you wanted to see more about this, please view the Chris LG and Chris Davis video or the talk from KringleCon. It's really cool. They showcase using HTTP2, which is kind of the argument here for curl. But that doesn't give us a whole lot of success in this terminal challenge, which is odd. Uh, so I wondered, well, what else can we do? Um, I tried to play with it on uh, my own terminal here, like a, a command line that I have just running on my own machine. See if I can pull up a terminal. Guess not. I'll just type it out again. I don't know why they keep moving out of here. All right. I guess I'm still on the Santos Castle automation, but I want to use uh, curl, except I noticed that my version is 7.47, which is old, at least relative to what they have in this Docker container. So um, when I tried to check out the man page for my version of curl and learn a little bit of, a little bit about it, it didn't give me anything that had HTTP2 in it. So maybe I'm just behind the ball. I gotta update curl. But if we were to check out the man page of curl in the Docker container, we don't have man. That sucks. But we can still run curl with tack tack or dash dash or hyphen hyphen. People ask me why I use tack, but I guess it's just kind of what I don't know. It's what I said. Military stuff. I don't know. So tack tack help. And we don't have less, so can't pipe to less. But we can just go ahead and scroll through it. Um, if we wanted to, you could grep for HTTP2 and stuff like that. But looks like if we were to look through it, we have the HTTP2 argument that we can use. We also have HTTP2 prior knowledge. So I thought, what is that? That sounds cool. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and try it. Curl, tac tac, HTTP2, prior knowledge. Knowledge. And then just connect to localhost 8080. And we get a valid response back, some HTML that's coming through. Okay, to turn the machine on, simply post this URL with parameter status equals on. All right, let's just say data status equals on. And we get some good stuff. You see the achievement unlocked in the background there? Unencrypted 2.0, such a silly guy. Congratulations, you've won and successfully completed this challenge. All right, awesome. So that wasn't too hard. Uh, just kind of learning about the tool that we're using and just reading the help file, see what arguments we can play with. And if you want to Google that, do some other research, you certainly could. Let's see what Holly Evergreen has to say now. Unencrypted HTTP2, what was he thinking? Oh, well. Have you ever used Bloodhound for testing Active Directory implementations? It's a merry little tool that can sniff Active Directory and find paths to reaching privileged statuses or privileged status on specific machines. Or separate machines? I don't know. I didn't see it right. <laughs> 80 implementations can go... <laughs> Excuse me. 
AD implementations can get so complicated that sometimes it's hard to actually have the administrators understand what's going on. And so they offer a link that we can check out in the hints here. I believe it is just the demo from Raphael Mudge here. Going Hi, this is Raphael Mudge, creator of Cobalt Strike. This. Sorry. In this video, he discusses how to use it. And it's not too hard. Um, I thought we were going to have to have that set up um, and like go ahead and install Bloodhound, get the Neo 4J database and everything running and all the graph library and stuff. But it looks like the um, OVA and the virtual machine that they offered when we downloaded it in the in the hints here, or not the hints, sorry, but the objectives, looks like they, like KringleCon and the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge, just offer everything inside this Linux image. So if you don't have VMware or VMware Player, uh, I would use VMware Player because a lot of people are having a lot of issues with this VM inside VirtualBox, which is a free, like, available version. It sounds like I, someone I think I saw in the comments or the chat here was able to get it to work if you change the OS from Debian 32 to Debian 64. Um, I haven't tested or worked with it that much, but I know I could not get it to work in VirtualBox, and I tried VMware Player and ended up doing okay with that, I think. But I now have VMware Workstation, and I've been digging that, so we'll open that up and we'll see what we can do here. Okay. So I've got the machine already loaded in. I just, like, go to Control-O and open, and then it's downloaded and all, so I can open up that image. Looks like it will start just fine for us. I'm going to hit Control alt and enter so I'll get it full screen, and that way maybe VMware tools will play nicely with it. Oh, no. Or it'll just go away. <laughs> there we go. Great. So, it, uh, I can't really zoom in all that well here. Um, Control plus and Shift plus didn't work in this terminal, but I'm just going to switch to the desktop, and because I have a Bloodhound shortcut in there, so I can dot slash Bloodhound, and it will open up for us. So, it seems to log into the Neo4j database just fine, and I had never used Bloodhound before, truth be told, to be completely honest. Um, I know it's covered in a lot of hack-the-box stuff. I think Real is a machine, R-E-E-L. Yep, <laughs> got the right number of E's. And, uh, but it, it's super cool, right? So let's say we have uh, Domain Admin as the goal over there for an Active Directory in, like, cluster or forest or domain. I'm using all the wrong words. Domain admin. <laughs> and all these user accounts and their members of whatever groups are accessible to some computers and stuff like that. So if we weren't to use that hamburger button over there, you can see there are queries that we can run. Let's say I want to find the shortest path to domain admin because that's what we need, right? We need to be able to figure how we can uh, leverage and, and work through a specific path from one user to reach the domain admin account. So we can specify this is the one that we're working with. And I actually ended up using some filters here. Uh, I actually tried to trim out, I think by default all these are enabled, so you can hit the checkbox to turn them back on and then rerun the query here. That had a little bit more to view, but I had success when we removed the can RDP box, right? Because the prompt in itself in CrinkleCon and in the Holiday Hack Challenge told us that you don't like totally disregard RDP and then I just kind of removed everything else that's in special but it shouldn't make I think execute DCOM didn't work either so again run the same query see what you can dig up and I figured okay it's not going to be any of these users because that's way too quick and we probably wouldn't have that account but if we were in a compromise or doing some pen test situation we would have some of these other low-hanging fruit accounts so I thought okay that gives me a couple couple options so I tried just kind of kind of going from the top down this L Dube dude, <laughs> and display name is Leanne Dube J. Dube J. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because, as we have seen in CringleCon, it wants this. Uh, it doesn't say it in here, but it should in the other. Okay, great. It says in the static page on holidayhackchallenge.com, it's in the username at domain.tld format. So we can go ahead and submit that. Oh, we've got to get back to navigating all these windows here. Paste it in. And thankfully, VMware Tools and VMware Workstation is really nice, so I can copy and paste in and out. The, the shared bridge clipboard is really awesome and handy. So there we go. Green check mark. 
Another challenge complete. That one wasn't very hard, right? You just kind of mess with the Bloodhound a little bit and really whatever it spits out you're willing to trust and go with. Um, that would be really, really cool if we did more with um, the domain admin stuff and tried to understand more about that data set or actually had a cult compromise system to work with. Um, actually, it's really cool talking and kind of lurking anyway in the central sec slack um jeff mcjunkin and ron bose and a lot of the other developers for kringlecon in the holiday hack 20 2018 challenge uh i remember jeff mcjunkin i think was saying like yeah we had like seven different challenges planned for bloodhound but we compressed it down to the one i think it may have been seven maybe it was three but seven sounds good too <laughs> all right Next challenge. Why did, I, why did I close that out? We want to check out the next objective. Badge manipulation number six. Bypass the authentication mechanism associated with the room near Pepper Minstics. Pepper Minstics. A sample employee badge is available. What is the access control number revealed by the door authentication panel for hints on achieving this objective? Please visit Pepper Minstics and help her with the Yule Log Analysis Cranberry Pie Terminal Challenge. All right. Now we have to go track down per Pepper Minstics. Okay, so we found Pepper Minstics in the absolute corner of, Can of uh, Santa's castle here. Looks like she will tell us. Hi, I'm Pepper Minstics. Have you heard of password spraying? It seems we've been victim. We fear they were successful in accessing, accessing one of our ELF web access accounts, but we don't know which one. Parsing through event X files can be tricky, but there's a Python script that can help you convert it into XML for easier grepping. Nice. And that's it. Okay. So let's check out the badge here, see what hint she offered. Password spraying. Password spraying with Mail Sniper PS1. And open that up. And we can close out some of these older tabs we have here. Sensitive data discovery and email with Mail Sniper. Uh, Tradecraft Security Weekly. Oh, cool. The Security Weekly podcast. They hosted uh, Ed Scotus a bit just before, the be just before the opening of the Holiday Hack Challenge. Looks like this is a whole video we could listen to or watch. And that's, we could certainly do that if we wanted to, but uh, I won't showcase someone else's video in my own video, I guess. Let's get back to it. Check out Yule Log Analysis, see what we have in here. It says, I am Pepper Minstix, and I'm looking for your help. Password spraying is to blame for this Grinchly fate. Should we blame our password policies, which users hate? <laughs> Here you'll find a web log filled with failure and successes. One successful login there requires your redress. Uh, redress. Can you help us figure out which user was attacked? Tell us, who've held, tell us who fell victim and please handle this with tact. Submit the compromised web bill username to run to answer to complete this challenge. Okay. We have the Python script to apparently dump event log files and the event log file itself and the run to answer binary. Cool. Let's, uh, let's tackle this in the next video, as always. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series. I say it in every single video because I really hope you are enjoying it. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, especially to record and to, and to crank through. So, Hey, please do uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all those fancy YouTube things. Help, uh, you know, keep, keep it growing. <laughs> Spread the love. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.